and I request all of us to remain attentive as we hear uh, from the word. May I request our dear pastor uh, to share from the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to thank God for this beautiful evening that God has given us uh, to be in the presence of the Lord and I'm really excited that as we have begin this 21 days of prayer and fasting I wanted to thank God for uh, the enormous uh, positive responses that I've got, got from individuals who've been calling and telling me that uh, they all wanted to really fast and pray whenever they get time and I'm really really encouraged by hearing that and many wanted to spend time in prayer. That is something so beautiful, so wonderful, and something that God really expects and God really rejoices and delights in us when his children uh, come together uh, at, the, at the feet of God uh, to receive from him. Amen. And we say that there's 21 days that we're going to uh, spend time uh, at the feet of Lord Jesus Christ, at the feet of the Father, at the feet of the Holy Spirit to listen from God. I really wanted to say that it's going to be a blessing. It will be a blessing. There is no doubt about it. I was just thinking of those days that whenever I uh, used to fast and pray and specifically asking God to intervene in my situations of my life. Specifically when I say intervene in the situation, not just situations, but the things that I really struggle with, the sins that I struggle with, the, the worldliness that I struggle with the areas of breakthrough I was in need of. I wanted to tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, um, truly God has intervened in those areas. If I stand here today, I've seen and experienced God intervention in many, many times in many areas of my life, experiencing him, experience the breakthrough, experience the changes and transformation. And I really wanted to thank God for that. At the same time, I can also assure you uh, one thing, uh, from uh, the you know based on the scripture that God will do the same in our lives and we all have different experiences to share when we think about the days that we have spent time at the presence of the Lord and praying and you know, fasting and asking God to intervene let's read a uh, Bible verse uh, from the verse in the Bible book of Isaiah the prophet uh, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 to 31, a familiar passage and a familiar verses for all of us. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 to 31. It says, he gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It says he gives power to the faint. The last verse it says, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Praise God. A beautiful promise, a wonderful promise from the prophet or through the prophet to the people of Israel, telling them that doesn't matter the situation. What really matters is that God will strengthen one who waits upon the Lord at his feet. Say so waiting upon the Lord at his feet is or can bring a tremendous transformation a tremendous change, a supernatural intervention of God in the lives of people. That's what a uh, prophet is speaking to people. Those who are waiting upon the Lord, those who are truly waiting upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. When we speak about fasting and praying, or when we speak about prayer in general, it is intentional. I always say is prayer are always intentional. Why is intentional? Because we're intentionally asking God's guidance. We're intentionally asking God's presence. We intentionally ask God's intervention into the life situations. 
So we are separating 21 days as church and decided to pray and to listen to God's word and worship his name. So it is truly intentional, right? And God loves the people, those who intentionally seek his face. We intentionally ask him and those who intentionally knock at his door. So the prophet says, those who intentionally wait upon the Lord, God will do mighty things among them. He says he will give power to the one who waits for him. He uh, strengthens one who waits for him. He gives and renews their strength of the one who waits for the Lord. It is just not intentional, but is intentional for a purpose. There is a clear purpose in what we do. Why are we doing this? Why are we fasting? Why are we praying? Why are we meditating word, God's word? Why are we shutting ourselves uh, from the worldly distractions? We are doing it because we want it to be renewed. We are doing this because we want a change. We are doing this because we believe only God can empower us to live a life which is worthy in the sight of God in this world. Because we believe it is only the God can do it. No human being can do that for us. So it is intentional. Second is intentional with a purpose. Third thing, it is intentional uh, that we are intentionally waiting because God has promised. Amen. How do we know that God will do it? Because God's scripture or God's word gives us a clear guidance saying that if you wait upon the Lord, I'm going to do something new in your life. If you wait upon the Lord, I will bring the renewal. If you wait upon the Lord, I will renew your strength. If you wait upon the Lord, then I'm going to do something that you have not seen in the past. So it is, it is intentional. It is intentional with a purpose and is intentional because we have a clear promise from the almighty God that he will do it. So next 21 days. We are intentionally separating ourselves from the world. We are intentionally saying no to many distractions. We are intentionally spending time in the presence of God. We intentionally take more time to read God's word. We intentionally meditate and ask God to intervene. Intentionally we do what we are doing. So with a purpose and waiting according to the God's promises. How can we, how can we uh, make sure that this next 20 days, is, and today is the first day, next 20 days is won't go in vain? What should be done uh, you know, from, our, uh, uh, from our side right, to, to see uh, that it all will result or it all will bring about the fruit that we are expecting and what God really wants us to do? Amen. So first thing that we are already decided to spend time. That's also the first step, right? We are separating ourselves from the world. And that's why the Bible says every time when God wanted to do something new in the land of Israel, God always called them. God always informed them and said them to separate themselves. That means it's a preparation that is needed. So preparing our hearts, our individual hearts, tuning it according to the God's word, is that how we wait for what God is going to do. When we wait for what God is going to do in our life or what God has promised to do in our life, how do we wait? We wait by preparing ourselves for it. It is just not, uh, you know, for the namesake that we do this, or it is not just saying, okay, we have to fast and pray. Or Bible says we need to fast and pray. So we are doing. No, as I said, it's a great, there is a great expectation. And because there is a great expectation, we also prepare ourselves to receive the blessing, to receive what God has promised to us. How do we prepare? We prepare our hearts. And we prepare our hearts in such a way that our hearts would be tuned to the God's word. You know, I would also, we should also, we could also put it in this way, saying that we are responding to the revealed will of God. When we, when we pray and we wait for the will of God uh, to the, uh, you know, how do I say, to, to know what God desire for our life is, uh, Bible says 
what we need to do first thing is we need to prepare ourselves according to what god has already already revealed to us through the scripture when we when we prepare ourselves with what god is expecting and what god has already prepared or revealed through the scripture then we are responding in the right way right we want god's will to happen in our life for that we must first respond to the revealed will of god so the scripture or listening and submitting and surrendering ourselves in accordance with the scripture is necessary for transformation if we pray and we believe and we come to the uh, come to the feet of the lord jesus christ asking him to renew us asking the father to strengthen us asking to father to do something new in our life then bible says we should be ready to listen and to submit and surrender ourselves to the word of god amen so in the coming days is that we're going to listen to the god's word as we're going to meditate in our personal meditation we are we are expecting and going to listen to the lord's word so must be ready to accept it ready to listen to it and ready to do what the scripture is asking us to do right so let's prepare ourselves as there was a need of land to be prepared to receive the seed and so that the seed will produce its harvest you know prepared land was very necessary in the parable where jesus spoke jesus said the land which was prepared that actually uh, you know uh, produce the uh, half 30 60 and 100 so let us prepare our hearts let us prepare our hearts according to the god's word then bible says we need to repent and we need to humble ourselves completely to god to bring about to see the very transformation or the very change and with the renewal and the strengthening uh, to experience in our life we must humble ourselves this is matter who you are this is matter how old believer you are how long you've been knowing this truth this is matter where you stand one thing is true bible says we need to always humble ourselves and we need to repent when we read scriptures i have plenty of scripture portions where god asked the people to tore their robe or tore their dress or and you know um, and put the sackcloth and put his ashes on them and to pray every time you know i just remember the the story in the esther where when a fasting was uh was ordered by Esther said let's all the israel let's all the land let's all the jews fast and pray for 3 days what did they do they all tore the robe by hearing the very verdict of king by hearing the news they what they do they did they tore their robe they put a sackcloth and bible says they repented they cried out to god daniel cried out to god when he read the scripture he understood that time has come for god to bring the revival or the time has come for god to take or take this people back to their homeland bible says daniel repented himself and he prayed and he asked god to forgive the forefathers in two so that god will bring the transformation when before uh, crossing the jordan and bible says that joshua asked the people to uh, you know fast and pray and so specifically to cleanse themselves so that god will do a mighty things among them so every time a revival happened when people read the scripture which actually two weeks back we were looking at this how at the time of ezra and nehemiah how ezra opened the scripture and then they read out right the people cried out loudly repenting of their sins and repenting of what they have done that's why i said the first point is preparing ourselves according to the god's word or tuning our heart to listen to the god's word second bible says when we listen to the god's word let's store our robe let's store our hearts let's truly circumcise our heart with the god's word and repent so that god will do great thing among us among us and the fourth thing and by third thing bible says that we need to be united we need to come together to see what god is doing and i'm so thankful for each and every one those who are joining in this evening right and and i wanted to thank god because you have taken time uh, we have come together right with a purpose we have come together united in a purpose let me tell you my dear brothers and sisters when we read through the scriptures what do we see every time when people came together to rebuild 
every time and people came together to build something from a heap of rubbles. Every time and people came together to do something new. Let me tell you, God was always been over them. When uh, every individual prepared themselves, when they tore their robe, tore their heart, and they said, Lord, we are coming back to you. When they said, we are coming back to you, God said, God has done a mighty miracle, mighty wonders. Things would be impossible from our side. I don't know what we are struggling individually with. Where are the areas that we are struggling? Areas that we think that we need a true, a real breakthroughs in our lives. It might be some answers of the prayer that you have been waiting for. You might be waiting for some breakthroughs in some of the addictions that you have or, or that's been, uh, that you are caught up with. You might be waiting for some changes to happen. You might be waiting for a transformation. You might be waiting for a gift from the Lord so that you could go out and serve many more people. Let me tell you, God knows your heart and he is, he is there to answer of all those prayers. Let me tell you, when we are come together, scripture says, when we have decided to come together, God is there. When one or two, right, when they come together and they united in anything and when they pray, God says, God will listen to it and answer. What a wonderful promise that God has given us. Right? We need to be united so that we will see God who do great things. If we are praying to something to happen in our own personal lives or as a church at WCC, let me tell you the necessity of being united about one thing is very important. Let's continue to be united. Right? It's 21 days. If you get time to Tune in all the meeting. If possible, if all the meeting, try to try to join all the meeting so that we will receive what God has promised. When prophet was standing on the mountain and he oh, what, what he also saw in the valley was many dry bones. And heads one place, uh, you know, the, the bones, the hand bones one place. Everything was completely separated. Everything was completely scattered in the entire valley. The question that God was asking the prophet, do you think that this is going to come back and leave? Of course, from a human perspective, uh, prophet was not sure about it. But prophet said, um, only you know, Lord. It is true. That's the only answer we can give, right? When you see only bones in a valley and if God asks us, will this come back and will this leave? We would say, no, it's, it's probably an impossible thing. Only God can do, right? Then we read in the scripture how God has sent his wind and God brought it back into life. And we're not, not going to get into everything, but God brought it back each and every part at the right time, the right way, and God gave the breath. And Bible says it became a large army. What Bible says? Bible says he can recreate things out of absolutely nothing. Our God is a God who created everything out of nothing. You might, be, you might not be able to see something happening right now. You might be seeing a lot of dead, uh, dead dry bones. There is no way that it can have life. There is no way that it can have a renewal. There is no way that it can have strength. Bible, Bible says those who wait upon the Lord and those who pray to the Lord and asking God to intervene in those impossible situations, God will do great wonders and miracle beyond our understanding. Hallelujah. This evening, how many of us truly believe that promise? God, you have done mighty things. As David, whenever he writes Psalms, if you have noticed, you would see something very beautiful. They will always remember of what God has done in the past. God, would, he would always remember the way that God had delivered the Israelites out of absolutely an impossible situation. He would always thank God. God, thank you for using people to deliver people. And he would ask God, God, do that same in my life too. So he trust 
or his faith was not uh, you know in those things what he could do or his trust or his faith was not depend on the situation he was completely trusting in that god who did something beautiful wonderful miraculous in the life of his own people and he was calling and he was asking god god please do will you do that again in our lives let me tell you god is a god who was send a spirit upon our disciples who were waiting last week i said who been waiting do not know what they are expecting but they knew one thing god has asked them just until and unless you receive the power from heaven from above you are not going out you wait until tarry until i pour my spirit upon you and bible says when they were waiting and asking crying waiting 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 and praying god did what he promised let me tell you this 21 days i don't know what you are waiting for what you are praying for what are the subjects that you have before the lord but if you truly wait for the lord to intervene in situation intervene into the hard situations of your life god will do that he can do tremendous miracle he can change our heart but let us continue to be in the heart or in the attitude of prayer and the attitude of receiving and humbling and repenting ourselves according to what god is speaking to us so god did mighty miracles he has opened the sea before the people he has healed the blind he has given the sight to the blind and he has he has given life to the dead and let me tell you whatever were the dead situation those dry bone situations in our life miracle can happen and can only happen god intervenes and bible says he will intervene when his people waits upon him he will bring about the change when his people truly and truly seek his face he will intervene when his people repent humble a seek and ask and knock do we truly believe that is there a situation in your life is there something that you are truly want god to intervene do you want to become a testimony before many people say my god has done something beautiful this is the moment and this is how god does his wonders in your life there are many reasons there might be many reasons in your life where you're limiting um probably limiting yourself saying i don't think this can happen but scripture teaches me something opposite whenever i read scripture you know what excites me what excites me is god has used some bunch of people who were absolutely not great or wonderful to do their duty i'm not saying they were lazy i'm not saying they were useless but of course they were not useful instruments in the hand of god the way that they were that is for sure what excites me and what what excites me or what is the one thing that guarantees me that new transformation is possible change is possible revival is possible because when i read scripture god has done this tremendous work through few people who were just waiting upon the lord to do something new amen hallelujah when paul is asking us to pray continuously pray persistently when jesus has told his disciples to pray and to wait he was telling i have a promise for you i have a plan for you i have a purpose for you and for your family but you want that to be revealed wait upon the lord and that will be revealed at right time amen i want to thank god for the way that god is already using you I want to thank God for already God is giving you what he has intended already God started giving to you all of you right already you know what you have got what God has called you for these are the days that we want to renew in 2021 we are starting with a renewal we are starting our and you know, bringing our heart before the Lord and say Lord before this year ends I want to see something new in me in the community where you have placed me and the church where you have placed me I wanted to see something new. I wanted to see something, something uh, in order to say extraordinary, beyond what a normal human being can believe with his own naked eyes. Amen. 
Do we wait for that? Do we truly expect God to do that? Then Bible says, let us be united. Let us bring our heart to the Lord and say, Lord, we are here. Hallelujah. The same way that you empowered your disciples, the same way that you are used to your people, used us for your glory, used us for something eternal, not just give me something of which is of which is of this world and just get, get satisfied with that and leave. No, not for that. That's not intention. My intention is you give me everything so that I can be a blessing to many. You give me everything so I can be a, a light to many. Hallelujah. Lord, strengthen me. Use me. Empower me so that I can be a blessing. Can we close our eyes together in the presence of God? We are going to get into, we already started uh, this 21 days of fasting and praying. Many of you have decided to fast for a few days. Many of you have decided to fast for a week or more than a week. And many of you fast, for, you know, decided to fast for 21 days. Many of you have decided to read and meditate the scripture. Many of you have already brought your heart before the Lord and been praying, Lord, do something new in my life. Is that your prayer in this, morning, in this evening? If that's a prayer, God's word gives us this assurity that God will not allow you to be fainted. He will give the strength to the weary. He will strengthen and renew the one who has needs of new power, the one who needs of a new strength. One who needs of a fresh anointing, one who needs of a fresh uh, experience from the Lord. And we are not waiting in vain because Bible says that when we wait upon the Lord, we will renew the strength. Why? Because God will give us the strength. Our waiting will not go in vain. This is not my promise. This is the promise that God has given to us through the scripture. Every time when people repented, when people came to him humbly asking and submitting and surrendering themselves, say, Lord, we surrender ourselves before the word that we hear. We surrender ourselves in worship. We surrender ourselves, an entire family, the church in worship. And we pray that you would do something new. Let the dry bones come back to life. Oh, let God recreate something out of nothing. Let God create something new out of nothing. What was in Peter? Nothing. What was in Paul? I would say nothing. God put a spirit upon them. And Bible says that they became the instruments in the very hand of God. So scripture encourages us to fast. Scripture encourages us to say no to the worldliness and turn our eyes to him. Scripture encourages us to stop living for the temporary thing, but to start and continue to live for the permanent one, for the eternal one. This evening, scripture is giving, God's word is giving us the promise. Can we surrender ourselves, our individual lives and family and church? Hallelujah. Today, we specifically wanted to pray together for the, for the rest of the days that we're going to spend in the presence of God. We specifically want to spend some time praying for the renewal, praying for the new strength, praying for God's Holy Spirit to you know, come upon each one of us with the fresh, 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 with the fresh experiences. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we surrender ourselves. I come before you this evening. As a pastor of the church of WCC, Lord, I surrender myself and I surrender my family. And I come before you, throne of grace, with the entire church, but in each and every one, those who are humble their heart before you, Lord. We are people who are in need of a touch from above. We are people 
who need a transformation. We are people who need a change. Lord, renew us. Lord, strengthen us. Mm -hmm. Lord, change us. Lord, empower us for the new year and for the new challenges that is before us so that we could take your word into new territory where your scripture has not gone, where your word has not reached, that we would truly become the light where you have placed us. Well, Lord, as a church, we will become a light to white field. Where as a church, we would become a light to this land. Hallelujah. Father God, as disciples waited at your feet to receive what you have promised. We as a church, we come together and we wait upon you, Lord, for what you have promised to us. Lord, when Mary decided to be at your feet, oh, you spoke those beautiful words to her and you said she has chosen the right thing. Lord, we as a church, we have decided to choose the right thing. That we are coming together in your, at your feet to listen from you, to, to uh, draw the strength from you, Lord, because you are the true cistern. You are the true well from where we can have eternal water, a water that can quench our thirst. Hallelujah. We ask sorry and we, we ask your forgiveness in our lives, the time that we have went behind, hallelujah, to the joy of this world, to the happinesses of this world, Lord. Lord, we ask sorry and we ask forgiveness for the time, Lord, for the things that we have spoken, the things that we saw, the things that we did, which was not pleasing at your sight. Father, we surrender ourselves. We surrender the rest of the time in your mighty head. May the 20 minutes that we're going to speak, speak and spend time together in prayer. Father God, we pray that a new, a fresh anointing would come upon your people. That they will all experience a change, a transformation. We come at and we pray and we surrender this next, the entire 20 days, day and night in your hand. Father, I bless the next 20 days and we pray, Lord, Father, that you will come and you will do something new and fresh in the life of your people. Revive us, renew us, strengthen us for your glory. May your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we pray together. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Can I ask uh, Moses? Who, gonna, uh, uh, who will help us in, uh, with the breakout rooms? Yeah, uh, we'll open up the breakout rooms. Uh, I shall send. Uh, I, I think Joe, uh, uh, Joe, have you shared it to the group? Yes, yes. I have I just sent it in the WhatsApp group and on the chat. I will also share it in the WCC uh, WhatsApp group. So you can actually do that and we can see the prayer request for that. I, I, I'll, I'll do that, Joe. I have already sent it in the WhatsApp group. 